Okay, well, um, here we are with video two, which is um, our first tutorial actually using Homer. So before we get to that, let me tell you a little bit about some resources that are available. Um, so if you go to the, um, the Homer website, um, there's my Blackboard site, by the way, and there's the Homer files in there. If you go to the Homer website, um, actually, this is a link in the previous file. This is in the previous presentation. Uh, this goes to the old legacy website at the National Renewable Energy Lab. So you can see the... Um, Hopefully you can see the uh, URL there, but it's analysis.nrel.gov slash homer. Pretty straightforward. Um, and and this, this is basically what they stopped supporting in 2005, I mean, it, in, when they made the transition. And what, all the only thing I want to point out here, and I'll, I'll upload this to the site as well, to the Blackboard site as well, but there's something called Getting Started. Uh, it's a PDF, a 30-page PDF, and it's a, kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial. Um, and uh, it's out there. It'll be an assignment I give you next, maybe at the next video, or maybe it'll be a homework assignment. But um, for now, what I'll do is I'll walk through an even simpler one uh, to show you what it is. So this is the beginning started guide, 30 pages, April 2005. So I just want to let you know that it's out there. So let's bring Homer back up. Here it is. Um, let's kind of take a look at the, uh, the, the frame here, what we're looking at, uh, the typical new file open file, save file icons we see in all of Windows. Um, we'll look at these reporting icons, search space, sensitivity. We'll look at these as we go along. Um, the, the main work is, that's being done is, is in this window, and the results are in this window. So we're going to build our system, the model that we're going to try to put together in this window. We'll set some specifications in this window. That's the button that gets the ball rolling, calculate, and the results will be down here. So let's just start. We'll get started here. Um, if you don't have this, in other words, if there's no open file here, this is the, the button that new that gets to start with a new a new project. Okay, and it gets stored in a file. You can bring the file back if you want. It's you know it's a typical kind of application. So our first step is this add and remove. So equipment to consider. And that brings up this dialog box. And it's pretty busy, and you can see there's all sorts of interesting things here. Um, and, and under here are loads, so we have to figure out what it is we're trying to power and specify that. And over here is things that can make or store the power. So, um, you, you know, as you can see here, I'll, t I'll show you how you define these later, but there's um, thermal loads and electric loads and, and also something, you know, maybe you'll have something that needs hydrogen. So it's, it's actually kind of an interesting program. They have all sorts of abilities here. Here's the typical uh, uh, renewables. Uh, PV, you can specify a couple different kinds of wind turbines, hydro, converter, electrolyzer, which is something that uses electricity to make hydrogen and oxygen, um, reformer, um, and here you can specify various kinds of generators and various kinds of batteries. We're going to do the simplest thing we, we can do, which is a load and a generator. And we're not going to model the grid, so we're going to say do not model grid. It's as simple as that. Hit OK. And we see our window changed here. A couple things changes. First of all, we, we have a little little map here showing a load represented by this light bulb generator. Looks like a little generator. And there's this vertical line here called AC. That's the bus bar. That's the AC. That's what we're hooking everything up to. You might think of the lines going into our uh, uh, our circuit breaker panel in our house. Down here, a new button showed up, and that's diesel under resources. Okay, so it, when we need something that requires resources, it'll show up here. So um, so we're getting there. We, we don't have it all done yet, but this is the beginning of the schematic. When it's all done, there'll be lines that connect them up. So um, first thing we do is specify the load. And so if I just click on that, it brings up this dialog box. And there's nothing in it right now. It's pretty empty. We, it, it gives you a little, little uh, idea here of, of, what, of what they're looking for. There's a couple different options. You can um, enter in. 24-hour typical day, and it goes, it kind of scales that. It builds a whole year's worth of data out of that. Uh, the details of that we can get into later, but, um, you know, we, we've had, we have some real data, right? We have the data from the smart meter data that we did homework for on. So as we move further along, we'll use the real data, but for now, there's some sample data we can, we can import. So uh, primary load one, we'll keep calling it that. It's an AC load. And I want to import the time series data. So I'll click that little radio button, and I'll hit Import File. Um, now, 
my dialog box comes up and it says, hey, remote load.dmd, that's what I want. Um, and it's there because I did it last time. I, um, I just went through this before I started recording. So my computer already knows where to find that. Um, when I first installed Homer, I wasn't so lucky. So um, you're going to have to search around a little bit. At least I did. And I'll just drop this menu down to show you where it's located. So it's in a sub, uh, subfolder called Samples, which is in a folder called Homer, which is in another folder called Homer Energy, which comes under your pro main program files folder on your C drive. Okay, so that's where it was. I had to poke around a little bit. So, so if it doesn't, if you, if it doesn't point to that right away, remote loads.dmd, go to program files, let me drop it down again. Your C drives, C disk, program, Homer Energy, Homer samples, and you'll find it. So double click on that, and now the windows just got populated. Things got real interesting here. So here's a typical daily profile. You see something that should not surprise you. It should be very typical for you. Minimum here at 3 a.m. Uh, flattens out during a typical workday, peaks out around dinner time, falls back out again, and then is continuous again. Um, look at the scale here. 2 kilowatts is the minimum. 6 kilowatts is pretty high. Um, now we see there's some seasonal variation. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. This describes max and min in a, in a given month. This describes the, 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 you know, the typical daily high, typical daily low, and the mean. So you get an idea. It's fairly flat. It's, you know, in, in Boise, Idaho, you probably see much bigger variation than what we're seeing here. Um, it's, uh, what else can we see here? It maxes out right about here, right? In April, it's, it turns out it's about 11 kilowatts. That's the highest you ever get. Um, and it never gets much lower than about one uh, half a kilowatt. This is an interesting map here, um, and I'd encourage you to spend a time looking at this. This is um, a color map that has three um, 8,760 pixels, so one pixel for every hour of the year. Um, every vertical stripe on this has 24 of them, so it's a day. And so we start on January 1st, here's June 1st, here's October, and it goes all the way to December. And the color is what the kilowatt load is in that hour. So you have this really neat visual image of how the load looks. So, you know, every one of these vertical stripes is one of these sort of samples here. And you'll see, you know, that the peak ends up here right around 6 in the evening. The lows are down here. Um, different loads will look different. This is just how this looks here. Um, these are the specifications, you know, the statistics from the load. You can see here um, the peak is... Um, 11.5 kilowatts, um, and uh, yeah, that's about all we want to look at for now. So there's there's a lot in here. It's a very rich um, environment, but for now, we'll just hit OK and, and see what happened. One thing just happened here. We got a line from the AC grid to our primary load and some specifications on the load. It averages about 85 kilowatt hours per day, so, you know, what was our homes, right? Our, our, what we saw in um, our samples and what we mentioned in class, 25 to 30 kilowatt hours per day is fairly typical for an Idaho home. So this might be, I don't know, three or four Idaho homes that are out remote in the middle of nowhere and we need to generate electricity for them. Peaks out about 11 kilowatts. Okay, well, we still aren't done yet. Let's go over to the generator side. And now we talk about the input. And this is where it's going to take a little bit of research. Um, because we, what they really want to know is how much it costs. This is the screening curve part of our operation. We want to say, um, and, and you don't have to put in a, a typical one. You don't have to put all the different kind of models, so that might help. But what we want to do is come up with a, a, a curve of some kind to talk about how this scales with size. So um, I did a little research uh, before I did this. I went online and did diesel generator prices, Googled that phrase and found, um, you know, several diesel generators in the 6.5 to 7 kilowatt range. So let me just put in um, a 7 kilowatt generator. It cost um, $1,700. That's, that's what I found online. Now, um, that's how much it would cost 
to buy it, but then you have to install it and hook up the wires. So let's uh, let's round it up. Let's say that's going to be two thousand dollars to um, install, and then the replacement costs are generally less than that because we already did the wires and everything. So let's have the replacement cost be just the cost of buying it. Um, let's talk about um, um, how much the, the O&M. This is the variable cost, not the fuel part. This is the operations and maintenance cost. And the example that I saw on the, um, uh, on the, the Getting Started Guide was $0.05 cents a kilowatt hour. Now remember, or $0.05 cents an hour of operation, not per kilowatt hour. Um, and that's actually probably pretty good. It generates, you know, seven kilowatt hours per hour. Uh, so that's in line, you know, fractions of pennies, um, fractions of a cent per, per, hour, per kilowatt hour of operation. So that's okay. We'll leave it at that. You can see what it did is it generated this kind of cost curve, um, saying that our capital costs, it, what, it, what, it's, what it's assuming is that if you get a three kilowatt, and it's going to be along those lines, or a five kilowatt, or something like that. So it can, it'll it'll move back and forth. It'll extrapolate. And in fact, let's um, let's give it another um, uh, another data point. Let's say um, fourteen, um, a fourteen kilowatt generator is going to be. Oh, see, they just extrapolated for you. So it's going to be twice as much because it's twice as big. Um, so it's just going to assume linear. We could put a different number in there. In other words, it's probably not going to be twice as much. There's a certain fixed cost associated with these things. But it's good enough for now. You get the idea. So I'm hit OK here. And now um, now I've got this generator line showing what, what is essentially a complete schematic. Um, let's go down here to diesel. And what, the, what they want to know here is how much does it cost? Um, again, I did a little research on this. Let me see if that window is still open in my own. Uh, my website. Yes. Okay. So I went to um, the Energy Information Administration. That and Wikipedia. What else? Do, what else do you need? Right. Got everything you need. And what we have is gasoline and diesel fuel update. Um, I just googled diesel fuel prices, and this was the second link um, here. So, you, so let's talk about this a little bit because we're looking at diesel for a generator for a stationary source and what you almost see quoted is highway you know on highway which is which is for trucks and cars um, and the reason that's important is because there's federal and state taxes highway taxes embedded in in our automobile and truck fuels so when I look here on 1022 which is um, a couple days ago Rocky Mountain region we're averaging about 424 um, a gallon for diesel, um, not pretty close to just saying if you just Google Boise diesel prices, I got anywhere low of four, or high about four twenty, so right in that area. Um, but I want to point out this little um, chart here, which is what we, what what goes into that cost. And what they're saying is uh, it costs about fifty eight percent of that was the cost of the oil that went into it, and another fourteen percent was refining, sixteen percent was distribution and marketing. I imagine there's profit in all of these things. But it's this top here that's taxes. So on average, sales and both state and federal taxes um, go out there. If you buy f diesel fuel for a stationary source, uh, you can you can get it without the highway taxes. Uh, it's called dyed. It's usually dyed blue or red. And, um, and then you don't... Um, you can't use that in a truck. It would be against the law. You could be prosecuted for tax evasion, but you can use it in a generator. So what I did was I took that 424 a gallon, um, took off 12% off the top, and then converted to liters because, of course, it's not in per gallon, it's per liters, wouldn't you know? And that comes out to, I think, a, yeah, 98 cents a liter. Um, so that's the price. Um, there's an ability here to say, don't use any more than so many liters per year. That's great if you've got something other than a diesel generator. I don't. That's all I have, so I'm not going to limit it. Uh, these are the, the generally um, um, accepted values for the fuel content, heat content of um, diesel fuel. So I'm going to hit OK there. And um, we're pretty much ready to go. Let me see if there's anything in this. Nope, that's it. Oh, yeah, there is one more thing. So um, there's the search space. 
So I'm going to hit that and it says, um, it starts with the various sizes of generators you put in there, or components. So I've only got one component here. Um, here it just says label. I'm going to show you something here. So I'm going to cancel out of here and, and hit my generator button again. And um, and see here under properties it's generator 1 and here it says label. So I'm going to call that gen 1, which is our gen. And now go back over here to search space. Oh, and there we go. So so when you do, when you give the when you start making a complicated system with lots of different components, give them names so that when you get to these tables and these other locations, you, you have a better idea what you're looking at. So this, this you know, if you have many different kinds of, enter, of power sources, of electric sources in here, or batteries or things, this gives you a grid which shows you how hard it's going to look. What, it, what are the bounds of its, um, its testing? What kind of combinations of variables is it going to look for, for an optimization? So here, um, there aren't any other ones. So it's, it's a very simple search. It's going to try 0 kilowatt generator, a 7 kilowatt generator, and a 14 kilowatt generator. Um, I can tell you right away, right? We already saw that the peak load was 11 kilowatts. So um, it says right here, right? 11 kilowatts is the peak. So a 0 kilowatt generator or a 7 kilowatt generator clearly isn't going to be acceptable. So it's going to choose, through an optimization method, the 14 kilowatt generator. Let's see if that's right. Calculate it. Huh, look at this. Um, it's only found one viable solution, and what a surprise. It's the 14 kilowatt generator. Uh, it says it's going to cost $4,000, which is what we thought it would be. Its operating cost will be $22,000 a year. The net present cost, in other words, if you look at the 30-year life, and, and somewhere in the generator load we set, let's think of it as a 30-year life, $288,402, which gives us a cost of energy of $0.72, cents, $0.73 cents a kilowatt hour. So it's expensive energy, right? We pay, it's about 10 times what we pay, I don't power, 7.5 cents is what we pay. Um, in a year, we're going to use almost 20,000 liters, uh, so divided by 4, 5,000 gallons of um, diesel fuel, and um, it runs all the time, 8,760 hours. Um, so let's um, hit that and, and double-click on that. And, and here's some information here. So here's our cash flow summary. Pretty boring. One chunk. At, this is how much you. This is the net present value. Um, if you actually look at how it goes over time, what you see is um, a lot of fuel costs, and every three years some replacement costs. So in the generator description, it said it's only good for I think 15,000 hours, which is about two years. So yeah, so every two years we have buy a replacement. Um, and then at the end of it, it's a 25-year life, I guess. There's, a, oh, that's right. We said the generator could last for. Um, a, oh, I know. So it's it's a 30-year analysis, and so there's some some salvage costs on the end of it. Um, anyway, that's the that's what the cash flow diagram looks like. Electricity is not very interesting. It basically it's you know that what we generate out of here is going to look just like the load. Here's another one of these cool. They're called D maps, but in this case it's showing what the generator does. And it's it's colored differently just because the scale set differently, but it's the same same idea, same thing we're seeing. Lots of information here. Um, here's the capacity factor of the generator. So you know we, it's a 14 kilowatt generator. It never reaches 14 kilowatts. So if you look at how much ener energy it had to generate to meet that load. Divide by its total capacity, which was seven or was a 14 kilowatt times 8,760. It's a it's only about 33 percent capacity factor. So you're only using about a third of this thing. So that's one of the reasons it's a little expensive. Um, you see, it never gets below 4.2 kil kilowatts. It never gets any higher than 11.5. Um, makes 40,000 kilowatts a year. Um, and a homer just crashed. That's interesting. Um, I don't know why it just did that. So I'm going to, um, yep, it's gone. Good enough. I was at the end of what I wanted to do anyway. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. We'll, we'll upload this video. You should get what's going on. Hopefully it's not going to uh, be a recurring problem for me or for you for that matter. And we'll uh, see you in the next video. Thanks.